Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hello, everybody. How are you? Sorry, I uh, didn't get the. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't get my. Well, I got to turn the light on. There we go. Uh, yeah, clap on, clap off. Anyway, uh, hi, how are you? I'm Alex Bennett. Let me turn up my mic a little bit get you going here uh uh, yeah i i I click something here and it's supposed to make things go back and forth but they don't so i had a little problem there hey welcome to the program got a great guest for you right now uh and we're very happy to have her with us every now and then uh and uh, in fact she uh well we'll just let the whole thing speak for itself That lovely face you see in front of you, which over the years has aged from when she was a young girl and when I first met her, and uh, uh, but it's it's still a very good-looking face, you know. Uh. You've aged (laughs) miraculously, Uh, and uh, this is my ex-wife Ronnie Bennett, uh, a name she got. Because she married me and then didn't want to change it because she started using it professionally. And why not? Did you ever legally change it to Bennett? Yes, I believe you did. I did. It was kind of a roundabout process, but yes, I did. Now, so it's funny that two people are sitting here, one named Bennett, the other one named Bennett, and mine is not my legal name. That's true. That's true. People ask where I I have to go through that long explanation every once in a while when someone asks me where I got the name Bennett. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you you got as part of a as part of a divorce settlement. I believe it was in the (laughs) it it was was in the divorce settlement that you could use continue to use Bennett. Oh, at. Oh, well, I haven't read it since the divorce. And, you know, that was about 50 years ago. I barely read it when we were getting divorced. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, so, uh, how are you doing? First of all, uh, you know, I mean, I've told my audience about your, your situation. We talked about it once before, which you came, came down with a diagnosis of pancreatic cancer, had this operation where they gutted you like a carp. Uh, finally, pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much you healed. And uh, a lot of people probably like to know where it stands now. Well, about three or four weeks ago, uh, one of the doctors told me that blood tests could not find any cancer, but blood tests are not definitive. And so a week ago, today, maybe, I think, maybe two weeks ago, um, I had a CAT scan, a CT scan, mm-hmm. which is, is the kind of scan, you know, that that pictures yeah. are sliced, min, you know, minusculely thick, yeah. and there is no cancer. Bravo. Now you understand do you understand what a great thing this is that first of all only 10% of pancreatic cancer patients can have the surgery um that it, it could be done at all and it's pretty much the only treatment and um even then cancer uh, pancreatic cancer uh is not very easy to take care of but uh, or try to get rid of so it's gone for now i will go for the rest of my life three times a year or so for another CAT scan to see if they can find any other cancer. And it does recur. Mm -hmm. Um, So three times a year I have to, I'll, you know, I won't sleep for a week before the CT scan. I know. (laughs) Well, I I think what's going to happen is uh, after a a certain amount of time, I guess you're going to get used to the fact that that test is coming up and it's not going to, it's not going to be as apprehensive, you know? I mean, you, you, you can't, you know, it, it's great that you've gotten this diagnosis. And so at this point, you've got to say, well, at least for the time being, I'm not going to live in fear. You know? Um, or am I full we'll of shit? We'll see how it works out the <laughs> or next am I time full I'm coming around for the next test. I'll, I'll let you know then. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, the, only, the only chronic diseases that I have are uh, imaginary. 
So uh, that's my. I remember. Yeah. You had a lot of them when we were married. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, so anyway. I assume you've only just added to them since? <laughs> oh, believe me. And, and some that actually <laughs> things that ails me, aches and pains that really do exist, but are so minor in comparison to what you had. You know, what you had, when you told me you had pancreatic cancer, I went, well, that's it. You know, because it's, it's usually a death sentence. And in yes, your case, miraculously, you're, at least at this point, you're clear of cancer. Yes, yes. And I've been lucky every step of the way. First of all, that they discovered it soon enough. That's the biggest problem with pancreatic cancer is that it's very hard to diagnose. So that by the time they get to it in 90% of patients, it's too far gone for them to be able to treat. And there really isn't any other treatment besides the Whipple procedure and followed up by chemo. Right. And I only got half the chemo I was supposed to have because it was tearing up my insides. So right. we stopped it. Okay, so they stopped it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you know, let's let's turn this into a political discussion. Coming right off of that, so how did you pay for your twenty percent? Because you're on Medicare, so Medicare took care of forty eighty percent, right? But I also have supplemental insurance that pays that twenty percent. Yes, so or most of it. So most of it. Basically, <laughs> your out of pocket was negligible. Negligible, except for. Um, except for uh, prescription drugs, which I take an enormous number of prescription drugs now. Um, not so many different ones, about seven or eight different ones, but I have to take them many times a day at certain yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> I have to have a chart up in the kitchen of which ones I take at what time of day. Um, and those, you know, you choose a Part D plan that helps pay for um, prescription drugs every year. And I had used the same one for many years because I never had prescription drugs. So you don't know, if you don't take drugs, you don't know what might happen to you. So you have no idea of how to change the coverage. This year, although now that I had all the drugs, I, I gritted my teeth and it took two full days of going through all the stuff at Medicare online about the Part D prescription drug um, programs. And put in the drugs that I take, the names of them and all this stuff. And I found a program or a coverage that looked like it would cost me quite a, several hundred dollars less than the one I still had. So I took that coverage. You can never be absolutely sure because these things are so, they make it so difficult to read. But I was pretty sure. And the first time, just a couple of weeks ago, that I had to fill in one prescription drug that I have to take before every meal or snack for the rest of my life. I had been paying about $300 a month oh, for, oh. and now I am paying something. I'm off by a little bit, but it's something like 28 or $38 a month. Um, so I pick, you know, so yeah, that, but that now, new what, coverage happens well, to cover this drug better. Okay. What happens now, folks, in case you're younger, don't worry about it. You're going to have to face this sometime. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it, you know, it may be two old codgers here talking about health, but you, you know, we're, we're forging the, the way for you out there. Uh, the fact is that you then hit a thing called the donut hole and the donut hole isn't based upon your $28 that you pay for your copay. It's based on the $300. And once you hit $2,500 or $2,800, something like that. No, 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 no. That's not true. What it is based on is the full price of the drug. That's what I'm what saying. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. It's based. Well, the full on, yeah. price of this drug happens to be something like fifteen hundred dollars a month. So the fact is that I it, mean that that's it, both after you know, after the about two months retail price of the drug. After about two months, you fall into the donut hole. Right. And I mean, you come out of it pretty fast, but you fall into it, and you have to pay the three hundred dollars. Right. Now, my question is. How many people at our age, I mean, can afford $300 a month for a life-saving drug? Because without it, this is not a drug that's saving your life. I believe it's the drug that's keeping you from getting nauseous and sick because you need uh, certain hormones, right? Uh, they're enzymes. Enzymes, yes. yeah. Uh, so if you can't afford that, what do you do? Well, um, you remember that guy Shkreli? By the way, folks, you come out of the, the donut hole after about, what, $1,500 or something? That's a little higher than yeah. that right now. But it, yes. it's but together with the other 
things that are cheaper in this new program, I'm still going to save several hundred dollars a oh, month, yeah. even going to the donut hole. Sure. Uh, I'm in a year, several hundred dollars a year. But do you remember that kid, Martin Shkreli? Yeah. Who bought the pharmacy company yeah. that had a drug that had been selling for something like $15, yeah. and he went up to 7000 or something? I mean, that, that's something that we really need to face because people don't have that money. And if you don't have it, I mean, there are programs with some of the drug companies that you can fill out a form. And if you don't make more than a certain amount of money, they'll give you the drugs for either for free or a very small amount of money. But that's at their whim. Mm -hmm. And nobody in the world, in the developed world, pays as much money for prescription drugs as we do. They're all much, much cheaper. And um, so... Well, for we instance, need real it, legislation it, yeah. to change this because at the whim of a kid who bought a pharmaceutical company, he can price something out of, you know, so that almost nobody can afford it. I don't know how he thinks that makes However, money. However, they went, can I say something? Doing. They went after this kid, Scarelli, and they should have. It was a terrible thing that he did. Yes. But I had a drug I was using for irritable bowel syndrome that was $300 that eventually went up to $2,200 a month. Isn't that approximately the same thing he did, but they're not going after them? Well, they didn't do, they were not quite as outrageous as he was. He went from something that was under $100 a month to something like $7,000 or more yeah, a month. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, but, um, you know, I'm not positive about this because there's so much thrown at us from the Trump administration every day who can keep track of everything. Yeah, right. But I think in Trump's budget, the one he released a week ago, um, which, of course, has every president has done this and it has absolutely no chance of becoming law. But I'm pretty sure that I read in the list of things that changes that uh, there was some provision for keeping the, the cost of drugs down. I'd have to go look it up. Yeah. But I think it was one of the few good pieces of news in that budget and it can't get through congress and it won't but you know unless we have to rely on all of those poor children in florida who are really furious with the federal government maybe when they take care of the gun problem we can get them to take over for a few other problems well, it just it just it, it has always bothered me that this government seems to be of a nature to want to go and do stuff which affects old people. Now what they're talking about, to take care of all the money they're losing on this so-called tax plan, uh, they're thinking of killing Medicare, taking it from Medicare, taking it from Medicaid, taking it from... Uh, uh, Social Security. Uh, uh, Social Security, which Social Security, quite frankly, is something that we put money into. They owe it to us. It's, by the way, never call it an entitlement as they do. It is you. an earned benefit. Right. Um, and, and Social Security happens to be the most popular federal program that we have that is pretty much across the board, even all Republicans that somewhere in the 80s and 90s like Social Security. Now, let me, I can I say something here to the audience that you're not only an expert on pancreatic cancer, you're also, <laughs> you're also an expert on aging, because you've had a blog for years called timegoesby.net, right? Right. And uh, uh, timegoesby.net is her blog, and it's, it's a, I think you title it something to the extent of, you know, the, the, how it really is to get old. I mean... The subtitle is what it's really like to get old. Yeah. And, and, and Which, by the way, until this cancer thing happened, I didn't have a clue. I've come to realize <laughs> now, you, even you, after all these years. Well, no, what you've gotten to is the, the part that you, you couldn't cover before, uh, which yes. is what happens yes. when you then get one of the illnesses that have plagued people when they get older. And, and as we get older, we have illnesses that plague us. Some of them are simple and some of them are massive. And, and you are now facing that. You have now faced that and now you have another little... Uh, piece of knowledge to throw in that kit bag of yours well let me tell you one of the ways i approached it though my normal way of anything like that hitting me or even something that just i think uh affects a whole lot of old people is to just dig deeply in the research and read every single thing i can read about it and learn everything there is to know this was more personal than writing about so i mean yes i get social security checks but um they're not going to kill me. Pancreatic cancer could. And so I made a decision when I was thinking all this, what this really means to me. 
and having to go through what obviously upcoming the surgery and upcoming months of of chemo what how was i going to approach this how much did i want to know and i'm i w- at, at the place that was treating me um they one of the leading pancreatic cancer surgeons in the world the whole chemo clinic are just stuffed with employees there from rns to even the people who just check you in every time uh that know more about this than i will ever know so i made a decision to just do a superficial look at it what is what is pancreatic cancer how does it affect you how is it treated um and i didn't dig much deeper than that because I figure I was an amateur at pancreatic cancer and these people who many of whom have worked there for 20 and 30 years they're professionals. Right. They have seen god knows how many people with how many different kinds of cancer and they know what works and what doesn't to the extent that we in general understand that at all. So I just went with what they told me to do and did my best to follow their instructions and that's I don't know if that's what got me where I am now but it was the best I could do and it seemed to work. Yeah. But, you know, getting back to the political question here, they seem to enjoy picking on old people. I mean, yes, the, the Republicans. Do. I mean, <laughs> and, and uh, quite frankly, I've been arguing that we are not the people to fuck around with. And I'll tell you why. Um, if they started going after Medicare, Medicaid, uh, Social Security, especially Medicare, uh, and I say it for this reason— they are out to kill us, all right? Literally, they're out to kill us. So why shouldn't we do them the same favor and find people who are terminally ill or who are old and strap bombs to them, you know, uh, because I, they have nothing I've left to lose. <laughs> <laughs> because they have nothing left to lose. What I'm saying is don't fuck with old people. Their, their assumption well, is we're not going to complain. You know, we, all, we vote in greater numbers than younger people. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, it's way up high, and I'm I'm so encouraged by the young people in Florida in Parkland. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, that that somebody is these young kids. I mean, this is not college. This is only high school kids, and you see them on television being interviewed, and you know they're 14, 15 years old, and they are not going to give up on this. They are really furious about the gun laws, and. This is, this is a way when you and I can't get out, probably, and most old people just plain don't have the energy to get out and march and travel all over the place and do this stuff anymore. And that this, I'm, I'm just hoping, it's only a week old, I'm just hoping, hoping, hoping that we have a new generation of people that are going to stand up to the federal government, or local if that's necessary. Right. And that that will inform all of us, including us old people. Yeah. It will begin to make a difference if we, if it works, you know. Um, but they seem determined. They're amazing. Yeah, well, I mean, it, 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 they, they, they've seen the horror of it, you know. Yes. And, and, but what I'm, uh, I'm saying is, uh, you know, uh, and that's good, you know, because I'll tell you one thing. When you're a young person, you can get out and protest. That's, that's the only reason why I feel that the government feels that, oh, well, what are the old people going to do? They're going to have protests. They're too old. They don't go out to marches anymore. And I have to agree. I don't go out to marches anymore either. You know, that, that is a young person's ability. You know, the, the, I remember, you know, I, I used to go to Washington for a demonstration. I'd sleep on somebody's floor overnight down there just to be able to march the next day. Somehow, right. uh, at my age, I want to know if there's a good hotel down there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what kind of sleeping arrangements are there? Uh, do I they have a good the mini bar? <laughs> <You know. laughs> I know the feeling. Um, but uh, but it, it maybe is a groundswell, you know, the beginning of a new era of um a protest see i not have, that there's i mean there's us old folks but then there's the guns and there's uh the the new oligarchy that trump has formed and the tax uh, the the tax rebates and the and the tax lowering of the taxes of already rich people i how much more do you need i'll tell you the best the, the guy suddenly i've gotten the biggest respect for was bill gates who today did an interview <clears throat> And on the interview, he said, I want to pay more taxes. Why should I be paying less taxes? I'm rich. You know? 
That's uh, that's a really important point about. Um, and by the way, when did you one ever, of the when, things about Social Security yeah. is that you stop paying into it when your salary hits. I think it's one hundred and thirty k. Yeah. Um, and so that all the people who make more than one hundred and thirty k um, don't pay beyond. You know, the, the, beyond, well, no, beyond there's, that there's a social security. It's, there's a social security cap. And that, that cap is like nine thousand what whatever the, that you pay yes, that's in. That's the cap. Yeah, that is the cap. And after that, you don't and, pay anything. And you don't. But that means that anybody up to one hundred and thirty thousand dollars in salary pays on their entire salary, all of it. Yes. Why shouldn't people that make any amount of money pay on their entire salary? Well, why shouldn't if you if you're going to have this social security uh, taken out? Why does it have a cap? Don't have a cap, and then you don't ever have to. To begin with, there should be no reason, if you think about it mathematically, that we should not have enough money in the Social Security system to take care of everything. But what happened was they borrowed money from us to fund wars. And so, it, you know, Al Gore said it should be a locked box. Well, it never was a locked box. That was the problem. And so, consequently, if, if everybody were just to pay X number of percentage, and it doesn't matter how much you make, there's no cap, we'd never have a problem paying Social Security. And we could probably fund Medicare with it, too. One of the additional problems that's come up since I started paying attention to this stuff 15 years ago is that um, this is a terrible thing to say because I think that there are should be far fewer babies in the world, but there aren't as many babies being born that are going to grow up and go to work. And that is going to enormously affect how much goes into Social Security and what, Medicare. What do, you, what do you mean aren't going to go to work? They just aren't going to be able to find jobs? Um, no, there aren't there to go to work. There aren't enough people to go oh, to work. Oh, I see. In other words, there are less babies being right. born. That would, cover, and that would cover the people who, you know, Roosevelt designed the Social Security system so that current workers pay for the previous generation who has retired yeah, right right and that has worked perfectly fine until now but now we have fewer and fewer younger people who are working um uh, fewer and fewer to do the working is what i'm saying so that contributes to less money going into social security uh, so there are a bunch of what there have always been besides lifting the cap a bunch of other tweaks that could make that could save it and another terribly important reason we need to save social security is something like only 19 percent of private employers supply um pensions anymore mm -hmm. under 20 percent um nobody people are paid so little for the past 10 or 15 years since the last recession that they get normal families with a couple of kids they can barely pay the bills every month let alone set, set aside anything for their retirement so when roosevelt set this up in 35 the idea was that social security was the third leg of the stool that you had your pension plan from where you worked and you had savings that you'd been able to do all your right, life. Right. Nobody can save anymore who's busy raising kids and trying to figure out how to get them through college. Yep. And um, and so Social Security becomes the de facto retirement program. And it was never designed to be the whole retirement program. But it's turned into that. So what do we do? Uh, you know, people get old. And, you know, they've worked hard all their lives. It's not like... They were slackers, but they never saved anything. And you, you can, and folks, you can only blame that on the fact that, hey, they just, you know, they spent their money on their families, on, on uh, sending their kids to school, and finally they get old and they see they didn't save enough money. It, that's not a fault. You know, they work their asses off. Don't they deserve to be taken care of when they reach their maturity? And I think they do. You know, I got to tell you, uh, the, the most, you know, the most thing, wonderful thing about my union, you remember after it, don't you? Hmm. Well, uh, uh, the most wonderful thing about my union was when I hit, I think, 75, I never had to pay membership dues anymore. But, <laughs> you know, I mean, at least give me something at this age, America, that I don't have to sit here and worry about where my next meal is coming from. I mean, I've got enough that I think I can take care of myself, but still, uh, 
don't blame it on old people because they don't have the money now to take care of themselves when they spent their whole life working their asses off at menial jobs just trying to eke out a living, you know? And, that, that and, even, not, and even not menial jobs. You know, twice in my life, um, because things came up with family that took most of my savings mm -hmm. to help make better. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that happens to all kinds of people all the time. Mm -hmm. Another one that comes along are medical expenses. Not everybody can even afford medical coverage. And so what little they have has to go when they get sick, has to go to pay for that if they can at all. Um, what has happened is this morphed from this one part of a three-legged stool, Social Security mor morphed from that, into being the primary, if you're not rich, being the primary retirement income that you have. And we need to adjust how we pay for that to fit that new idea that it became. And there are a lot of smart people who have a lot of good ideas in addition to um, uh, to raising the cap, which won't entirely do it. But there are other good ideas that aren't going to cost any individual people a whole lot of money. Right. Right. And it would be that then we would have plenty of money to take care of everybody as they got older. But we don't have a Congress that will do anything about this. And we haven't had for six, eight, ten years. So can I? Uh, can oh, I, Ryan I, just wants to kill Social Security, period. Uh, I, I, once my uh, my wife and I were doing a video and we simply titled it uh, to on YouTube, uh, not on YouTube, on uh, on Facebook. We titled it, Nobody Wants to Listen to Old People. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. I, I honestly think that they dismiss old people when they have something to say about their problems and about what their needs are. That there's a complete dismissal. Ah, you're going to die soon anyway. You know, uh, we, we don't have to pay attention to you. You know, and I, I well, that that goes on throughout. And, after a certain age, did you know that age discrimination in the workplace begins as young as forty for men oh, yes, and as young absolutely. as thirty-five for women? It, absolutely, and. Try to get a job after 60. You just, I mean, that's why I had to stop working at 63. I couldn't find anybody to hire me, and I was interviewing only with 20 somethings, I think and how I looked you, like how, their grandmother. How you described it is you went in for a job interview, and they looked at you like you were a Martian. Yeah, it, uh, you know, because they were all 27 years old, and I looked like their grandmother to them. It didn't matter that I'd been working on the internet for 20 years at that point. Um, that they just assumed that I couldn't. There's a whole lot of myths about old people that they don't, that they're too sick to show up to work, that they won't work hard, that they won't, they can't learn anything new. Uh, you know, there's that fame, what, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. They've been applying to old people forever. It's just plain not true. Mm -hmm. I can, so far, we'll see what happens in time. So far, anything new I've wanted to learn, I've been able to do. Well, I've decided that with what I do now, I suck. But then again, I always did. So, you know, what's, what's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I notice age affecting my performance to a certain extent more than the audience does. But I, you know, it's a little more difficult for me. This, I have to concentrate a little more, you know. Well, in my case, it manifests itself by after 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in in the afternoon, I am both physically and brain dead. I, anything that I have to accomplish in life that takes any physical effort or mental effort, I have to finish before Dur During the afternoon, do you find at some point you doze off? Oh, yeah. I was laughing with a friend on the phone just yesterday that he said he gets so angry with himself because he tries to watch. Now, remember, we are on the West Coast, different from you guys. Right. Um, and, and he said, you know, I can't even stay awake to watch Lawrence O'Donnell on MSNBC anymore. Lawrence O'Donnell is on at, I think, 8 o'clock here. <laughs> or 7 o'clock, I think, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, I just noticed we way run out of time. But, oh, I just love talking to you. And you, you always say to me, well, what are we going to talk about for 25 minutes? And then we start talking. And, uh, you know, before you know it, we haven't even started to hit the tip of the iceberg. But I think what you have to say is very important for people to hear. You know? Yeah. Eh, no, yeah, don't dismiss yeah. yourself. You're what you I don't know. I think that what I find is that um that Social Security and Medicare even puts old people to sleep. Well, but you know, you can you can uh, I was at lunch today with my uh, my business manager, Gary Haber, 
And we said, you know, the difference between a bunch of young people getting together and, uh, you know, old people getting together is young people getting together talk about who they got laid, how they got laid recently, and old people sit around talking about health and about health <laughs> plans and about, but you, you know. know that, you know, I've, that a lot of that has come up because of, of this pancreatic cancer. And I, I'm speaking of learning new things. I mean, it's been just constant during these eight months since it was first discovered of learning new stuff about the medical community and cancer itself and treatments and all of this stuff, um, which you know, I, how do you not learn it when you're kind of in the middle of it? But what I've also discovered is that it's really interesting. There's a woman I know who in the past 10 years or so, I think it's in the past 10 years, has had something like seven pretty good-sized surgeries. And I was talking with her once about, sometimes shortly after the surgery, uh, my surgery, of how not just tired I was, oh, yeah. fatigued to the bone. And she said that after one of her surgeries, when she was finally okay enough to go take a shower on her own, that all it was, hey, we ta all take showers almost every day, right? No big deal. She came out of that surgery wrapped in a towel, and she didn't know anybody could suffer this much fatigue, and she just fell on the bed and wept. She was so tired. I know that You want to know something? I'll tell you this, and then we better get going because we're running out of time here, or we have run, way run out of time, which is fine with but me. I, but I just want to say, I just find yeah. that stuff, first well, of all, well, no, empowering to know yeah. that I wasn't the only one well, it ever happened What I to. was going to say is the worst thing I've ever had in the hospital was a while back, I got a kidney stone. They put me in the hospital for four and a half days. This is minor stuff. This is baby stuff. This is, you can laugh at me for having a kidney stone stuff. But the fact was, I thought that four and a half days in the hospital, you get out of the hospital and you've been in bed. You've been under morphine for those that amount of time. You slept like crazy. By the time you get out of the hospital, you're going to have more energy than you ever had before. I went right home and slept. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> hospitals are not, oh, no. not restful. They are not restful, <laughs> especially when you got a nurse at three o'clock in the morning waking you up saying it's time for your blood draw. <laughs> hey That's listen right. i love talking let's do this more often you are so good you are so smart you're you know i mean uh, come on i really loved being the dumb one in the family you know <laughs> uh, no 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 there was always bert there was always bert we had a cat named bert bert was the stupidest cat that ever lived on the face of the earth <laughs> he used to go sit in the corner of a room and stare at the corner for <laughs> <an hour. laughs> Hey, I love you, Ronnie, and let's do this again soon. I really mean it. And stick let's around when we're through here so I can say goodbye to you. Ladies and gentlemen, a woman who I can proudly say used to be my wife, and, of course, uh, I'm sure she doesn't have to do the same with me because for her it was probably the worst decision she ever made. <laughs> but you all said, you know, I never married again. So I <laughs> yeah, I spoiled it for everybody else. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett, thank you so much, Ronnie. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Okay. And that's our little get-together with Ronnie. We'll do it again. We have another uh, one of these scheduled in a couple of weeks, I believe. Yes. So we'll, uh, you know, we'll hit the, hit the boards with her uh, in a couple of weeks. Okay. I uh, hope you enjoyed her. I I find, you know, I, I we, ha we have a better relationship now that we're not married to each other. OK, it's it's and I uh, um, it's it's a pleasure to talk to her. And um, if my other wife is listening, I love you, too. OK. All right. OK. Anyway, uh, listen, it's time now to take your calls. Uh, and let me let, let me just uh, say uh, that uh, it's got Phil Free Night tonight. Uh, I know a lot of you are going, yay, Phil Free Night, okay. Well, so feel free to call. That's the joke we always pull. Uh, if you don't know how to call this program, uh, by the way, the lines are open now. If you don't know how to call this program, very simple. You go over to gabnet.net, G-A-B-N-E-T dot net. And over on the right-hand side of the page is a whole tutorial on how you get Skype, how you call using Skype. There's even a button there that once you get Skype, you turn Skype on, you know, you open it up, turn it on, make sure you're 
you're up and running. And then you just click on that and it will call us. Okay, it's that simple. Okay, uh, there's also a phone number there as well. So that if you're not uh, if you're not in the uh, in, in of a desire uh, to um, um, uh, uh, use the Skype, then you can use a telephone and call us, and we'll be happy to talk with you that way too. Although it's better if you can use Skype because if you've got a camera, we can see you, and if we can see you, then we can better. Like when you want to talk, you can just raise your hand and we'll recognize your existence there. So anyway, uh, tonight, uh, who knows how many people are going to call tonight? We don't know. We had a great show last night. We had a great show on, on Friday. Uh, you know, uh, needless to say, there's been a very uh, big topic on the agenda. Uh, and it's out there like crazy. Uh, and that is, of course, the, the school shooting in Florida and discussion of that. We can also discuss other stuff now, too. You know, uh, uh, we, we don't ever... Oh, look. My pillow. I have a pillow here. My pillow fell out from underneath me. <laughs> uh, you see, I'm wearing my jammies again. See that? See those? All the people who are watching us and not listening to us. You know, you can also listen to us as well. Uh, Again, for both the video and the audio, you can listen to us or watch us at gabnet.net. You can also, uh, if you just, uh, if you go to um, uh, youtube.com forward slash Bolo Bennett, B-O-L-O-B-E-N-N-E-T-T, forward slash live, it will bring up a page. And that page, whether I were on or not, always kind of, is working it has a countdown to the next show and so on if you put that as a tab in your browser you can just go to that anytime we're on the air doing a video and we will be on because the minute I click the button here all of them start the uh, video on the uh, on the gabnet page uh, starts the video on our YouTube uh, pages start uh, and on that the link I gave you it immediately starts the only problem is we haven't found a way of porting this over live at the same time to Facebook, which is difficult because, oddly enough, Facebook doesn't like you to do that. Um, there are programs where you can, supposedly, you know, you can use YouTube and Periscope and a bunch of those all at the same time, but you can't use Facebook at the same time because they don't like it. <laughs> so you, if you're running Facebook, you have to do it. In a, 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 I don't even want to start explaining it. Hey, listen, look who we got here. And, you know, he, he looks so much better now that he has uh, his own uh, camera. Uh, I mean, his, a new machine, rather, with a better camera. Look at that. Look, it's t every, every nuance that is Tom Yamaguchi. Hello, Tom. Hi there. <laughs> How are you this evening? Yeah, I also move so that I'm not that light isn't behind me too. Yeah, yeah. So. that was always you was always a light behind you, so you were always yeah, kind of in. Track lights. Yeah, the track lights behind me. Yeah, because, because the way my desk is set up. Yeah, well, also the uh, the uh, Skype has a kind of a thing that compensates for that light and so on, and it's it's terrible. Yeah, you know. So anyway, how you doing tonight, Tom? Oh, I'm I'm doing okay. I really really like the uh, the your interview with with your uh, ex wife, and uh, I was wondering if you'd be considered having her on uh, live with us some night. Well, you know, I'll tell you, I did that with a guest on a on I think on two occasions, and it didn't work too well, and, and for for odd reasons, uh, one of which was. Uh, nobody else wanted to talk. The people didn't want to talk. They wanted to hear what the guest had to say, mm -hmm. and so there wasn't the, there wasn't that kind of interaction, you know, that you you would normally have. So I found that just doing guests with myself and them does the job. If I were to bring her then into the show, it it it's it's different. It really is different. So you know. Yeah. Well, I I just thought that you know that uh, the idea would be to have interaction on the the discussion you had tonight about aging, about about dealing with uh, medical issues and insurance and stuff like that. Yeah. It might be interesting. It might be an interesting conversation. Well, you know, uh, you know, you know, it's interesting. I I wonder if it is an interesting conversation or whether I'm just creating a show here for old people. 
<laughs> you know? I mean, which is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, you know, I've always, I guess, all the way throughout my career, never tried to play to an audience younger than I was, you know? Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? In other words, I was always appealing to uh, an age group that was closer to my own. And so now, why shouldn't I be talking about this? These are the life issues I, I talk about. And look, we have another old fart here in Ray Renati, who just joined us. Hey, Alex. <laughs> Not that old a fart. He's a young boy compared to me. But fifty-six. Fifty. You're fifty-six. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you're 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 twenty-two years younger than me. Right. Yeah. Uh, you're the same age as my dad. A uh, shut up. <laughs> shut up. You are. <laughs> shut up. Uh, <laughs> okay. Once I met up with this woman, and this was when I was younger. <laughs> when I was younger, really, when I was in my. Uh, Gee, I think my late th mid mid thirties, and I met up with this woman, and she said, "So are you married?" And I said very proudly, "No, I'm not," knowing that you know maybe I was come, being come on to. And she says, "No," I said, "I'm not." She says, "Oh, well, great. Listen, I have my mother at home. I think you'd like her." <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Bobby Berth. How are you? Oh, well, not too bad. I yeah. don't need to take any of my blood pressure medication tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it's funny that uh, uh, Ray has been. Uh, you've been com uh, conversing with uh, 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 Phil. Phil. Yeah, off I, well, off the air. You know, I helped him with his back problems and stuff. And you know, he, uh, I'm I'm just trying to be nice to him. <laughs> I don't agree with anything he says about this gun stuff, but. I'm just trying to, you know, listen to his point of view, although I just can't understand it. Look, I, I don't want to I don't want to ruin anybody's impression of Phil because it's it's good for business, perhaps. Uh, because yeah. it brings it brings another attitude and idea into the into the picture. But I sometimes I feel he's taking the position he takes to be the adversarial one. You know, to be provocative, to be provocative, because the Phil yeah. I know on a personal level, okay, is a is a very nice guy. You know, I never disliked Phil. You know, I don't remember him from when I was younger, but then again, I was doing a lot of drugs back then, and I may not have been able to remember. But I, you know, so uh, you, you know, but it does like he does things that I I wrote on the little thing you do between each other. Uh, yeah. I wrote to him and said, you know, that, you know, I like you, Phil, and you're, a, you know, you're a really decent person, but when you do things like you did last night, you disappoint me. Right. You know? No, I, yeah, I read that. Uh, yeah. And uh, he said, well, you know, we can agree to disagree. And so I don't, that's a saying I hate. We mm -hmm. can agree to disagree. No, we can't. Yeah. I disagree <laughs> with you. I'm sorry. And I don't agree that you can disagree with me because I'm right. Is that being well, too stuck in the mud? Yes, yeah, Tom. In fact, it, especially when someone brings up such nonsense as as psychotropic drugs are causing, you know, are causing uh, all these these uh, all these mass shootings. I mean, a, any scientific research would debunk that. And does debunk that? You know, you probably and, could and, say. And, and, yeah. and, 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 so, and as the as those young people said, uh, you know, the other day, this past weekend, we have to call out their BS. You know, it's it's the same it's it, it's the same thing with the uh, with the anti vaxxers You know, saying, oh, we've got these this documentary that shows that uh, that uh, that uh, childhood vaccinations causes autism. Nonsense. Yeah, what was her name? What was that? that, that, that we don't have to give a platform. That, that woman that, that, that... Peddling absolute nonsense. Who, who's that woman the that Sirius gave a show to who went around yelling about that, you know? Oh, the McCarthy. MTV woman. Um, Jenny McCarthy. Uh, Jenny, Jenny McCarthy, McCarthy yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, that cunt, I hate to use the term because I only call people I really like a cunt. Uh, uh, Jenny McCarthy is probably responsible for the deaths of a lot of kids. Yeah. As a result of her going around and telling people, oh, don't get this because they'll get autism from having, uh, you know, what vaccine, the measles vaccine or something like that. 
Yeah. The fact is, yes, I will agree with Phil on one thing. Maybe in one or two cases of these shooters, there was an, a, a drug involved that was maybe causing the problem, that caused the problem of the craziness. I, right. we're, you know, it's possible. But he was saying all of them. Right. You know, and, and that uh, pale, uh, that, that does not make a lot of sense. You know, no. it's not scientifically sound. Yes, uh, yes, yes, Ray. Yeah, one of the problems is, and it has to do with the Internet, is when everybody, when it, anybody has one of these goofy theories, Yeah. when you search for it on Google, the goofy theory is, you know, on the first 10 pages because it just, they just inundate the Internet with this bullshit, these lies, yeah. this propaganda. And you can't find the truth anywhere unless you really dig. And it looks, if you look on Google, it looks like these pills do cause mass shootings. And it, it's really... Well, also, it's really, also, and then also, uh, Bob had his hand yeah. up. Uh, the, the thing that happens is, especially with a guy like Phil, it's very dangerous, is that I often say the reason a lot of people watched Fox News is because it validated their own wrong opinion. You know, uh, they and people will go to sources that validate a, a, an outcome that they want to find. And Phil does that. You know, he will see something that validates what he believes or what plays into what he wants to believe. And, and then he just, you know, over and over, all last night, it was drugs, psychotropic drugs, psychotropic drugs, because he read about it. Um, it doesn't mean there isn't a bulk of science that says that's not so. That yes, these drugs can cause all kinds of problems. We know that. But they didn't cause all these shootings. A thing called a bullet, I think, uh, caused uh, the deaths of these people. Yes, Rob Ebert. Yeah, uh, I was seeing something the other day where it was saying the biggest consumer of false fake news are the right-wing people. They have yeah. their bright parts and things like that, and uh, they believe everything, you know. And any, I have one guy on Facebook. He's always posting stuff. Every time I have fact checked something he's put out from Breitbart or something, mm -hmm. it hasn't been accurate. Yeah. But they believe everything, you know. And just like uh, I live in New York State, and we have a, a Republican senator today on a talk show who said that most of these shooters are actually Democrats. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, wow. So Yeah, bad. she's going up for re-election. She's a Republican, I guess, someplace up here, upstate. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I, well, I'm trying to think. What would make a, make a Democrat a shooter? Huh. I, I, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It would seem that the right-wingers would make a lot more sense, but I wouldn't even imply that, okay? Uh, y yes, uh, 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 Tom. Well, to be fair, and, uh, and what we're talking about here is confirmation bias, and that afflicts every all of us. I mean, I'm, you know, I I can I can find myself looking in, and 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 pulling, looking for information that that uh, that reflects my bias and rejecting others that, that contradict it. I think it's. It's, it's something that we all have to be aware of. And I really think that in a way, with this current investigation of, of how the Russians interfere with the election, mm -hmm. I think this is actually a wonderful opportunity for us to realize that this is a deeper problem, that this is a real challenge for our democracy. We've had uh, propaganda and misinformation for ages. But under this new current uh, uh, technology of, of social media, uh, you know, we're more we, we've become particularly susceptible to a way uh, that it's being presented, and it is really strongly affecting our judgment. And this is an opportunity for us to learn something about that and figure out how to, to counteract. It. Well, if, if you think about how how uh, you know. Uh, uh, the elections used to be rigged. It was by, you know, dumping the ballots in the river. You know, <laughs> that, that was about the biggest kind of technology we had with the mm -hmm. Internet and everything now. I mean, I always thought about this world of the future as being wonderful 
and that I could hardly wait. I hoped I'd lived long enough to get there. I always used to think, well, how old am I going to have to be to make it to the year 2000? And, and what's it going to be like at that point? And, you know, I mean, it's a lot of the things I thought we'd have, we do have. I mean, my Echo talks to me. She tells me stuff. She gives me facts and figures and tells me what my appointments are and things like that. You know, and the cell phones, the, 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 you know, the smartphones we have. I mean, all of that. And you would think all of that, the, the sum total of all of that would be a more enlightened world. And instead, it's created a dumbed-down world. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't know that I wasn't better off as a kid growing up in the late 40s and 50s not having any of this technology. Uh, I think the world is a far more dangerous place. And, and uh, you know, we talk about, uh, about uh, identity theft and things like that. You know, it's, it's, it's not, not great stuff. Yes. Uh, actually, you don't even have to hold your hand up tonight. Because yeah, you it, know, Alex, is, you know, back, it, it, back in the day, uh, if you wanted to find information about something, you had to go to the library and look at books or look at microfiche. Well, your parents had to buy the Encyclopedia Britannica all 26 I had that. miles. And, but the good thing about it, it was truth. You know, it was unbiased Truth. Well, it was it, it, it was truth up to a point because you had to keep buying a new encyclopedia no, I know, to keep yeah, up to date. date. I know, yeah. <laughs> but now, like, 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 um, like, like you just said, Tom, uh, this confirmation bias thing is real. But the problem is, is the the most illogical arguments are often the ones that are the most accessible, and so people just, you know, bite the hook. And, and and just believe this stuff without really really thinking or looking hard and that's what scares me and, and it and it's all it's it's permeates so many different areas of our life yeah. um, there's a lot of uh, Republicans today that are being upset because Twitter has started blocking a lot of the Russian bots and these guys are losing followers like crazy <laughs> and they're <laughs> upset <laughs> Yes, I was watching. You're right. I was watching. Um, I, the trouble with uh, TV here is I have uh, let's see here CNN and then there's uh, the uh, uh, the uh, CNBC and then there's MSNBC and then right next to it uh, is they drop Bloomberg and then right next to that is this really right wing station Newsmax. Mm. And there was a guy on there today complaining about that. That his he was losing a lot of Twitter followers because uh, Twitter uh, was looking upon a lot of his followers as being suspect, <laughs> <laughs> and I and, and how this is a, com, a conspiracy to affect the right wing. No, it's that Twitter and Facebook have become paranoid about what their platforms have been used for, mm-hmm. and they, and I don't think they really know how to deal with it. You know. No. Yes, no. you had your hand up, uh, Tom. Yeah, I was just going to say earlier. Uh, by the way, I just checked. I haven't lost any Twitter followers today. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been holding steady uh, about uh, six hundred and eight. I've held. I've held all mine, but then again, I bought them. So you know, yeah. it's. Uh... I have not. I, I refuse to buy Twitter followers. <laughs> but uh, and I do pretty good for a nobody. I'll mm-hmm. tell you, six hundred eight isn't bad. Oh, that's but that's I good. Gonna say, uh, I was just going to say that. Uh, that uh, there was a book that came out a couple of years ago by a guy named Rick Shankman called Political Animals. What's it? What's his name? Politi- uh, Rick Shankman. Oh, Shankman. I have a friend called Sh- Rick Shankman. Sh- yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sh- yeah. Sh- it's with an N. Yeah. So I replaced the C with an N. N. But yeah. uh, he wrote a book called Political Animals. And one of the argu- arguments that he has is that Unfortunately, our brains have not evolved that much from the days when we were a hunter-gatherer society. And so, so the, our social relations that we're used to based on trust are still rooted in that, that era when, when people lived in, in little tribes and really knew each other and knew how to uh, make judgments of who they can trust and who they couldn't. Yeah, and that's the real challenge: is our technology has advanced and evolved farther than our our, our own brain's wiring systems. Wow, 
Well, I mean, I read the book. Yeah, uh, you know, it 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 it's uh, we just live in I think very perilous times because of the technology and the fact that a technology, all this technology is very good. I mean, it it could be used for such wonderful things. But instead, you got a bunch of Russians who say, hey, we can use it to pervert an election. And, uh, you know, uh, think about the calls you get, you know, the robocalls you get and the, the spam you get and the people who are trying to take over your computer by having you open that spam. And, you know, it's turned into a nightmare rather than this utopia. And I, I, I was yelling and screaming about the utopia to come is going to be wonderful. You know, it's not going to be 1984. It's going to be better than that. You know, wrong. You know, and it's and, overwhelming. It's just so much information all the time. It's just, it just bombards you. Oh, and if anybody uh, has isn't following me on Twitter, can you go? Because I just looked. I didn't know, but I have 666 followers, and it's kind of freaking me out. The Why? How many, how, how many did you? Oh, oh 666? Six, six, it's oh, wait a minute. Hold, hold on a second. Uh, wait a minute. What, 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 I just don't what, like seeing 666. Wait, what, six, what, six what, what, is your tw- what, what is your Twitter uh, account? It's just at Ray Renati. Let's see here. Let me see here. Let me see here. Let me see. At? Yeah. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Let me put on my glasses. Uh, this is <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, at Ray yeah. Renati. Yeah. Yeah, there you are. Okay. It says he's following me. I yeah. go to him and watch. Oh, you're following oh, cool. me? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm away for. All right, thanks. Uh, okay, Alex. so you're not at six sixty six anymore. Six sixty six anymore. No more six sixty six. I just limit myself to Facebook. Oh, really? Too many, too many things to try to follow. And well, here is the terrible thing about Facebook. I, I got, and it happened basically when I was at Sirius. I got five thousand followers to Alex Bennett, and what happens when you get five thousand followers? That's all. That it maxes out. So now, uh, every now and then, I start losing people, you know? And every I can always tell when I'm losing peop- people because all of a sudden, I get people wanting to be my friends, and they're these hookers. <laughs> and I don't know, hello, Patrick. Uh, uh, I, I, they're the, uh, these hookers, you know, these women with huge tits. I mean, it, thank you for sending me those pictures but quite frankly, you know, I ain't the sucker you think I am. And it's like, I don't know what it is. There's some kind of system or something they have that as soon as somebody has people available, like only one, I will suddenly get a whole bunch of these. So I have to like click on one of the groups of people that it's suggesting I should have as a as a. Uh, as a friend to lock out them by getting the 5,000 again. But I, but I get those, those women and I don't know, number one, I don't know how they do it. But secondly, I'm sure Facebook does. And number three, why don't they do something about it? You know. I get this on Instagram all the time and I, I just ignore them now. Yeah. And then they send me, they send me messages, uh, but I think it's just a bot thing. You know, I don't think it's really, it's not those women. It's somebody who's trying to rip me off in some way. Yeah. Well, I yeah. I always I always don't allow these these particular people. And I'm sorry if some of if there are one or two of you that happen to actually be a good looking woman who likes this show. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a problem. It's a problem. Um, uh, I, let me. Can I tell you something? I'll give you a little uh, uh, update on something that. Happened to me last night. It's happened to me the last couple of days. We use a, I use a, a, a company called GoDaddy for both my email address, uh, my uh, so that I have a, a GabNet email address, and uh, I pay them uh, a little over a hundred for that, and uh, a little over a hundred a year to have the website. Okay, uh, and. Over the last couple of days, I've, I've been trying to get them to do stuff. Now, this company has been pretty damn good to do business with, and all of a sudden, it's a nightmare. 
I, I go to somebody and I say, here's the problem. Oh, well, we'll have to send you over to our hosting department. So they send me over to the hosting department, even though I clicked for hosting, all right? Uh, and and I, how long will that wait be? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, eight minutes. So now I'm sitting there, and they've got these two songs they keep playing over and over and over again. In fact, I went online looking for it, and there was actually a YouTube video of somebody playing that music. So it, it, it's, <laughs> And it's been those same two songs ever since I've had Go Daddy, which has got to be about three or four years now. So uh, it's it's terrible. And uh, so I'm waiting, eight minutes, and then I get somebody. Now, this is the last night I get somebody. And he says, okay, well, I will ask the, the uh, I have to go get a hold of a higher administrator to take care of this. And now I'm waiting and waiting. And after an hour and f 15 minutes, of listening to this music interminably and every now and then having the guy going, we're getting close. He finally comes on and says, they can't solve it. They're going to turn it over to uh, another part department. Uh, he, here, here's the ticket number. And I get to get off. And I go, you just made me go away. You know, and I, I sat here waiting for an hour and 15 minutes. This is, you know, I didn't get any payoff. Uh, and I just said to myself, you know, how does a company one day go from being so good? It used to be I'd call them, I had a problem, the guy would look at it, and let me click a few things here, ah, now it's fixed, to this thing, which is just torture. It's like water being dripped on your head. If I hear this music one more time, I'm going to go nuts. And I'd play it for you now, but probably they'd tell me I can't play it, so. I can't remember who I was working with online when I was having some problems on something, but they uh, ran into a thing where they'd have to go to a higher up, and the guy says, can I take your number, and we'll call you back. Well, you see, and he, here's what I said to him. This is what I didn't get. I said to him, okay, you know what the problem is. I'm just, I'm not able to get to my files and stuff like that. It just keeps whirling around. And they say, well, there's something wrong with it. I said, well, why don't we just hang up here and you can go fix it? Okay? And they said, oh, we can't because the minute you hang up, we stop working on it. Oh. I went, wait a minute, what? And they said, yeah. If, we, if I hang up, uh, if you hang up and I don't have you on the line anymore, the guys down further down the line stop working on it. I said, so if I hang up right now, you're never going to fix my problem, and I'm paying you money for it. And he went, yeah, that's right. Now, it's never been that way with this company before. It's just all companies are getting worse and worse. And then I look, I figured I'll write, a, I'll write one of my curt little letters saying, here, here's how you can make your company a better place because I liked your place and I had a good, used to have good relationships with them. And I went to look for a contact number there is no contact number that you can write to. You can call them, but write to for GoDaddy. They say GoDaddy no longer accepts email. Mm. What? No, you don't accept email? And you're an internet company? You're supplying me with my email address and you can't, you're not taking email any longer? It, you know, I just... I, it's that's another part of this whole conundrum we're in with technology that whatever good it should have it doesn't have do you, do you guys get frustrated by this at all i'm sure you have problems oh, yeah. too yeah definitely that's why i switched i left godaddy and went to well i still have one of my websites on godaddy but the the latest one i use namecheap namecheap and they're, they're they're smaller, and I get better service. Yeah, well, I for a while did you find that with GoDaddy it was pretty good. You would call them up, and they yeah take care. Yeah, they of were them? they were good for a while. But yeah, then, yeah. I I heard that they I think they farm sometimes they farm out some of their um, customers when they get too many, and they and they you don't know it, but you're actually talking to somebody else, like you're talking to an ancillary company that they have some stake in or something. 
Wow. And then you get kind of put off. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just the whole nature of, of yeah. the thing. And there's a problem I have where I can't see my statistics, and I call them up, and they say, and I had to wait for an hour and a half on that one, and they said, we finally, we fixed it, and they fixed it, and then it went bad again. And yeah. I just don't want to go online again and have to stay there for the, the rest of my life waiting to get a problem solved, you know? No. You, you should know what you're doing. Just flip a switch. Whatever. Anyway, that's part of the problem is that, you know, either that or you get somebody at some company who says, well, I can't do it because I'm not allowed to do that. Where in the old days, they would do it. You know, they had a little free will. Remember when people in tech support had free will? Yes, Patrick. <laughs> well, the thing is, just what you said is if you hung up, what if your line got disconnected? Well, I made sure, I said to him, I said, you have my phone number, right? He says, yeah, it's the one in, in, ending and blah, blah, blah. And I said, yeah. He said, uh, yeah, because if somehow we get disconnected, I want you calling me back. I don't want you guys to stop working on this. And then eventually they let me go because they were going to stop working on it and turn it over to a higher power. I guess they send a ticket number to God. You know, uh, and uh, uh, but that yeah, you're absolutely right though. What what if they didn't have my number, and what if we got disconnected? Does that mean I'd have to go through this whole procedure all over again? And they say, and we're putting it down the file so the next time this happens, they'll know what to do. And then they looked at my file, and it didn't have how to handle the problem. So you know, I mean, it's just crazy. But wow. but. It, it, the, the part that does drive me nuts are the people that when you call them, they can't do anything because they, they're not empowered to do that. Well, then why did you call them in the first place if they can't solve the problem? You know, uh, I, I just think that we, you know, it takes something like we're using Skype here, folks. And I put this challenge out and I've yet to ever get a piece of email. Tell me a way I can contact a human being at Skype. I mean, literally, I'm not talking about a chat. I hate those chat things uh, because yeah. they say something and you say something, but then they're writing something before you've said what you said, and it, I just hate it. I hate chat. It's just, you know, it's only good for, like, here on the show, the people are, are having... Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> Forman says, Go Daddy got those same two songs from the Guantanamo Bay torture archive. Uh, uh, it, you know, I mean, it, 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 it's just, it's, it's, it's maddening that some of the stuff we have to go through. And in the case of Skype, you can't even find somebody to call. You can, during certain hours, chat with them, uh, but they only give you the same stupid answers, you know, something... You know, I'm surprised. I don't even know if there's anybody there or if it's some computer that figures out what you've just said and then spits out an answer you're going to want to hear. That, that's what it is. Is it really? That, that, that's what I've experienced every time I've done the chat thing with various different companies that you get a general answer that sort of answers what you're asking. But then, if you ask more specifically, it it doesn't answer. Yeah. So it, yeah, it it just it, it seems like the more technologically advanced we get, the further behind we get. Yeah. Because I remember being able to call, let's say Sears, and ask if they had a certain item, and they would say, "Please hold," and they would go to the department where the item might be yeah and if you come back and say yes we have it it's 25.99 and you say okay can you put it on hold for me now you can't do that everything automated and it's yeah i, I um oh, i remember one time on chat i actually got a problem solved actually got the problem solved so there must have been somebody there uh but sometimes i get the feeling there isn't anybody there you know, and um, the, the thing that happened to me the other day with Montgomery Wards, my business manager getting a letter to our, my post office box in San Rafael, 
or to his post office box, from Montgomery Ward saying that before they can ship the material I ordered online, I'm going to have to make a down payment because of the expense of the item. I, I never, thought Montgomery Wards is out of business. They know they're still in business. Oh, uh, and this is probably the reason they're going out of business. Uh, I have never been to a Montgomery Wards in my life. Even as a kid, I think I never went to a Montgomery Wards. I certainly have never communicated with Montgomery Wards. So how come I get this? So I call them up, and I get somebody, and he, I had an order number there, and it was a legitimate order number. And he said, yeah, I see the order in front of me. I said, well, that's a, you know, that's a fake. I never ordered anything. I've never had done business with Montgomery Ward. And he went, oh, well, this is probably a, a, a fake. And I'm thinking to myself, I should have asked, like, what address was this stuff going to be sent to? Because you sent the letter to my post office box, but the person wasn't going to get this. It was something that had to do with PlayStation, like controllers or something like that. Certainly couldn't get it by sending it to me. Um, so he says, by the way, he says, hold on, and we're going to turn you over to our fraud department. He said, but I'm taking it off now, all right? Okay, good. Now we'll turn you over to the fraud department. I wait on hold for 20 minutes for this fucking fraud department. You would think fraud would go, oh, fraud here? We want to know what the fraud is, right? <laughs> and 20 minutes later, this person picks up, and I said, uh, well, we, we have a problem, blah, 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 blah. He said, well, I know I have it in front of me here. They just told me about it. It's right here. I said, well, and they said, well, thank you for calling. <laughs> I went, it was like they didn't give a shit. You know, I mean, come on. That's why your company's going out of business, because you don't give a shit. You know, and you're probably not paying your people enough, so they will give a shit. So wow. it, it's just, you know, th th we're running into all these problems today. And computers have not made them better. Computers have actually made them a tad bit worse, I think. And we've all had our horror stories about them. Yeah. Let me throw another subject out here that I, and, and this is another thing, another piece of technology bothers me. So I go to, we go to the movies last Sunday. We, we get ourselves at the Comfy Chair Theater two tickets to see The Black Panther, all right? Uh, which everybody says, very good picture. And uh, I'm here to tell you now, it's the best picture I've never seen. Okay, let me explain this to you. We get <laughs> go into the theater, and a girlfriend says to me, boy, that screen is kind of dark, isn't it? And I said, yeah. And once you put on the 3D glasses, it even gets a little darker. And now the movie starts. And the picture is dark. I, you know, I, I couldn't tell who, which one was uh, Lupita Nyong'o, for Christ's sake. You know, I couldn't tell who the blank pa I couldn't, it, it, it was hard to see, okay? And in all the advertising I've seen, they say what a colorful picture it is and how colorful the costumes are. I'm looking at this absolutely drab world. So I get out of my seat and I go down to the, the front. I tell you, can I talk to the general manager, please? Uh, well, he's not around right now. I said, okay, well, the, the theater in theater three, the, you need more light on the screen. There's just not enough light on the screen. So the guy says, well, I'm the projectionist. Like, What's he doing down here? That's because there is no <laughs> projectionist. It's just all automated, right? And we go in and we look at the screen. And I said, look at that. And he said, well, it's a dark movie. <laughs> and I went, not this dark. You know, he says, no, it, it just, wait, wait, till, wait till you get some light, light it lit up scenes, right? So I go back and I sit down. It's still terrible. So now it's playing a little off kilter in a, another time frame uh -huh. in the theater right next to us. So I get out of my seat again because I'm not missing anything because I can't see anything. And nobody in the theater is complaining about it. And I go next door to the theater and I put on my glass and the picture is gorgeous. Right? A scene we had already seen. Just gorgeous gorgeous so now i go back down i said let me talk to the general manager and the general manager was there and he said i said what i said the picture is dull and in three it's fine in two it's fine in three it's terrible he said let's go see 
So we go up and we look at screen number two, which is the good one, and he says, oh, that looks terrific. I said, yeah, it looks great. I said, Come on. And I take him over to the other theater and he goes, yeah, it is dark. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, okay, it is dark. Uh, he said, uh, we can't stop the film to fix the problem. We're just going to have to do it after this showing. But after the th show, come on down and I'll give you two free tickets to the theater anytime you want to come. I said, okay. Thanks for letting me know. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, these people, this isn't a cheap movie. From girlfriend and myself, and we get senior tickets, it was $41 for the two of us. How much was it for the people who weren't seniors? Almost 50. And then there's the popcorn, and there's the cab to get to the theater. And before you're through, you've spent $75, $80 to go see a movie that, quite frankly, isn't being projected the way it was intended. Mm -hmm. And these people care so little about it. And I had trouble with this theater once before where the picture was in 3D and the movie that came on was in 2D. <laughs> and I went to check to make sure I didn't go to the 2D theater, that I was actually watching it in the 3D theater because it was in two different theaters. No, I was in the 3D theater. And the guy wouldn't believe me till I took him up and said, look, it's not in 3D. Mm -hmm. we, we got our money back, and I went back a week later or something and saw it. But the thing was, the people watching this movie paid about five bucks extra for the 3D, right? None of them complained but me. <laughs> and they all had, and I looked back, they all had their glasses on. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. Yeah. So, I mean. People, I, people are lemmings, man. So, I mean, I wonder, I mean, I mean, these people, didn't they know they couldn't see that picture very well? You know. They don't give a shit. Is Tom? Yeah, I used to have that problem with uh, the United Artists Theater here in Berkeley. Yeah. Oh, uh, in fact, I I stopped going. I can't remember the last time I've been there, but they they they're projections. One one movie we said that they were actually projecting it backwards, and you could <laughs> see the soundtrack on one side, and I was <laughs> running all over like you were, trying to find you know somebody uh, you know that uh, you know that that was responsible, a management person. It took me about five, ten minutes to find to find somebody to realize that they, you know, they were projecting this movie backwards. It was. Uh, well, I mean, it. it, it, it they they just—it's one of those. Well, you know. It, how it, do you project it, a movie backwards? Well, this was well, this was a long time ago, actually. So this was, this was uh, film. You know, the it was film era, yeah. you know. But uh, you know, this is a, th a theater, you know, that once was a single screen with a balcony, and then they. They, uh, they uh, you know, broke it up into a whole bunch of other screens. Yeah. And, in fact, my daughter used to say, I don't want to go into the, this theater because this used did, to be did, the ladies' room. I don't you, want to sit and watch a movie in the bathroom. <laughs> did you ever go to the Kabuki Theater in, uh, in San Francisco when they converted it to a whole bunch of movie theaters? And they were so desperate to convert them to movie theaters that there was one really small one that maybe had, I would say, 50 seats tops, and none of them were facing the screen. Because <laughs> <laughs> the screen had to be put over to the side in order to fit into this room. But, but the thing that bothers me is that, you know, these movies uh, were made by professionals, and by craftsmen and artisans, who put together a film with special effects and color photography and costumes and everything else, who are also likewise being cheated because their product is not being seen to its best advantage because of these complete fucking morons running these theaters. Yes, Bob? Well, uh, I'm going to state two things. One, I'm amazed at how many people I meet out in the world that are about as sharp as a marble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, there used to be lawsuits because I lived in Utah and they had these companies that would take these movies and sanitize them and take out the dirty oh, words oh, yes. and things. Yeah. And there were lawsuits because that movie is a work of art and they're defacing the art. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the movie, I'm trying to remember the movie. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it now. But there was this one film who was with, uh, was it, who was, who was, Harvey Keitel was in it. The something detective, the something. The bad detective, the right. The ba bad detective, maybe it was always called, the bad policeman or mm -hmm. uh, something like that. And I, it was it's really, in the beginning, a nun gets raped, you know, and and it's really just, uh, he's, he's, uh, He's he's betting on ball games and he's like just the most corrupt cop you can possibly imagine, and it's a very gritty film. Just an bad lieutenant. Bad lieutenant. That was it. Okay. Bad, uh, 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 wonderful picture, grim, coarse, everything. All right. So I had this girlfriend, and I, as I was known to have from time to time. And I said to her, uh, you know something? I saw this great movie a while back called The Bad Lieutenant. We should go down to Blockbuster and rent <laughs> it. So we went down to Blockbuster and rented The Bad Lieutenant. And I put it in. And I'm going, this isn't The Bad Lieutenant. This is not the same movie I saw. And then I come to find out that Blockbuster didn't like The Bad Lieutenant thought it was not right for their audience and would only accept an edited and reshot version of the film. Yeah. <laughs> and I went, what a fucking ripoff. You know, people would say, I heard about The Bad Lieutenant. It's supposed to be a really good film. And they go there and it's seen like this Disney movie. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, we all know what happened to Blockbuster. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. If I remember right, that was Blockbuster had done that to quite a few films. Yes, it was, a, it was a big deal at the time. Sanitized. Yeah, them. yeah. Which a five-minute version of Raging Bull. Yeah. Well, I mean, my <laughs> my attitude is: look, I don't care what the filmmaker did or what he didn't do. Whatever he created is his vision to be put on that screen should be seen like that. And then when you go to these theaters, and you know, I can't, I. When I went to that other theater and I saw the one scene, I saw them going into this uh, this uh, 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 what can we call it? This little world where the Black Panther comes from. It's a very futuristic world, and it was it was just it was magical to watch. Oh, by the way, the other thing you, you know you know when they show movies, they they have the panels on the side of the screen that go in and out depending upon the. Mm -hmm. the it, it, they were too far in. They weren't showing the full fucking screen. That was another part of it. And all these. And at the end of the film, we sat there. We watched the whole thing. We figured, what the hell? I want to know what happens. It, it, it's a, it's a good film. I think. I'm not sure. I wish I were here to tell you I saw it. But mm -hmm. after the film was over, there were people in the audience applauding. <laughs> and I'm thinking. T tell me what you just saw. What do you think you just saw? You know, I couldn't tell which one. I literally couldn't tell which one was Lupita Nyong'o. Mm -hmm. And Martin Freeman, the British actor, was in it. And it was five minutes before Girlfriend realized it was Martin Freeman. I mean, that's how bad the picture was. So, now here's the thing that bothered me about Black Panther. Because I think uh, it's a very well done film. And I think it's the kind of action film that I would like to see because it's not as much about the action as it is about the story and about the history of this guy and whatever. And it's, it's very good in that respect. But the one thing that bothered me, and I don't know if this would bother black people. I wish we had some black people on this panel tonight to, to say mm -hmm. how they would feel about this. But this is the picture that they're saying is this is great for young black people because now they have their own black hero, their own black superhero. But he comes from this part of Africa that was hit by a meteor with this uh, uh, metal, I can't remember the name of it now, which allowed them to create technology and to have this very evolved society within the African continent. And uh, you get to it by going through this little tunnel and stuff, and then they see this world, and it's beautiful, and it's got trains and everything, you know, and it's very evolved. And all I could think about is if I was black, I would call bullshit on that. Because what you're saying is the only way 
that Africa could become evolved was not through culture, but through technology. That the only thing that made them advanced is technology. And that this picture was not portraying African culture as being great and evolved, which it was. Mm -hmm. You know, even within the, the most remote tribe somewhere, uh, uh, the fact that you you don't wear all your, all the clothes, you don't wear suits to work and things like that doesn't mean you aren't an evolved society. And I kind of found there was something that just didn't hit me right that black people were now being portrayed as very advanced scientifically rather than advanced socially, that they didn't reflect the, the African continent in a, in a positive light. Does this make sense what I'm saying here? Yes. Yes, it makes sense. Well, it doesn't make any sense to me because I haven't seen the movie. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> no, I know. I mean, I know what you mean. Uh, yeah. I haven't seen it. I will yeah. say, I actually would love to see the movie because I'm in. I like. Um, uh, well, Ryan uh, Krugler, who uh, directed, is from from the Bay Area. Yeah, he, he did. did up, he did Fruitvale Station. He, uh, he created. Yeah, he re he did uh, did Fruitvale Station, which is a really good movie. Yeah. I haven't seen Creed yet. I hear that's really good. Yeah. But I hear there's a whole bunch of uh, Bay Area references in the movie. So it's yes, of... it takes no part of it takes place in the Bay Area in Oakland. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, the okay. opening takes place in Oakland. It, 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 it's it's it, 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 it's hard to tell you how it fits in, but it's that it, it, part of the character. Some of the characters don't live in Africa; they live in Oakland. Okay. All right. Well, I'll see at the Grand Lake, they never screw up of of of, of a a screening. Yeah. Grand Lake, wonderful. Listen, place. I I found it a very. I love uh, Grand Lake. What what I yeah. saw of it, uh, you know, I wish I, I. This is definitely a film I'm going to bootleg, uh, from the internet because I feel they owe me my money. Uh, <laughs> I I, I uh, absolutely uh, feel that it's it's well worth watching. You know, it's one of those it's one of those Marvel pictures that got away. You know, that was like Guardians of the Galaxy was a treat, and uh, uh, Deadpool was a treat. But and this was this was a treat too. Um, but it um, uh, it was it was just it was just terrible that I didn't get to see it the way I should have seen it because I was really looking forward to it. But it is it is good, and your the director definitely had ulterior motives in this thing. I'll tell you another picture that's very good uh, in the same respect. And it's the only thing DC's done that's really any good lately, and that's Wonder Woman, uh, because you had a woman writer, you had woman director, you had you know it, it, and it really you know in that particular case you know you have to believe that there was this island where these Amazonian women uh, existed and they were created by Zeus. Uh, you have to believe that, but that's more believable than saying, well, now we're going to show you Africans and we're going to show you black people as they really are with their overhead trains being run by this mysterious mineral. <laughs> you know, I mean, it just, it, it, I, it, because the thing that always bothered me about people was when they kept referring to, you know, Africa as, as primitive. And yet they were very evolved societies within themselves, and they had mores and 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 uh, their 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 uh, uh, fashions and their design was wonderful. And yet we pass them off as being savages. That I would have liked to have seen something that went against that, you know. But mm -hmm. instead, you had to have somebody that they, luckily they got this meteor hit them, and all of a sudden they had all this science. Yes, Bob. Uh, I seem to remember seeing something the other day where far back in the Marvel Universe there was a Native American superhero, and now they're thinking about resurrecting that one. Really? Uh, That's what I saw. How did it do, I wonder, in the comic books? I think Black Panther uh, was actually pretty popular. I don't know. I don't... I stopped reading comic books when I was a kid. I mean, what they would do, you know, in those days, what they would do is they would put out all these uh, comic books and keep throwing them out until one stuck, you know. Uh, and uh, so Marvel had just an infinite number of characters. So they're, they're dredging up stuff that most people didn't even knew existed. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy was pulling together like a group of different characters from different comic books that only lasted <laughs> a short time to make a movie. But as superhero movies go, this one's pretty good. You know, this one is very tolerable. It, it's not, you know, it's, it's less superhero-y uh, than it is really a story and a vexing problem, let's say. Okay, that's the best way I can put it. Hey, uh, Alex? Yes, Ray. Did, did you did you see the series uh, Daredevil on Netflix? Yes. I thought that was good too. I enjoyed because... Daredevil. I like Jessica Jones a little better. And I and I liked Jessica Jones as well and I because they weren't so superhero y They were more about the relationships I, I, and. And, um, and you know, I, I saw really people good. saying that. Well, gee, uh, you know, at last, finally, we have a superhero for black people. Well, what was Luke Cage? Right, Luke Cage, which is a great series on Netflix, filmed yeah. in Harlem, and I love it because I sit there looking. Well, I know where that is. I know that corner, and I know <laughs> this corner. The only thing is, they never used our building, and our building's one of the most predominant <laughs> buildings in Harlem. Uh, but uh, and they would he would say oh you can go catch a bus up at uh, you know at uh, um, Adam Clayton Powell and 116th and that's exactly where you can get a bus so I like the the fact that they weren't you know ruining the neighborhood but yeah. uh, Nick Cage uh, Luke Cage Luke, rather yeah. was every bit a a black superhero right you know. definitely hard as steel <laughs> yeah I mean bullets couldn't hit him. But he kept he kept saying, "I keep having to buy new T-shirts, you know, because they had all these holes in them." But if you've never watched, uh, if you have Netflix and you've never watched the Luke Cage, I think it was very good. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, and I think the, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Daredevil are yeah. excellent shows. And, and then they went on; they did a kung fu thing, and then they did one which was an amalgam of all these characters together. Yeah, wasn't right. as good. But those three are just terrific. And if you're f uh, a fan of Doctor Who, David Tennant is the bad guy in Jessica Jones. And the bad one of the bad guys in Luke Cage is the guy who won the Academy Award last year for Moonlight, the for Best Supporting Actor. The yeah. guy with an unpronounceable name that I can't remember. But uh, yeah. I love anything that takes place in this neighborhood. And now they've got Mozart in the Jungle back on again. Of course, my apartment house is in it again. Because oh, that's cool. that's where they watch it. that's where they live, you know. Yeah. Only they changed the uh, the address on the on. Um, there's a plaque outside with the address, which is 1925, and they changed it to like 13305 or something. So. Do, do they just have a second unit shooting the outside and then go film the interior no, somewhere oh, else? Oh, a lot of the actors show up here. Yeah. Oh, they do. Okay, oh, yeah. cool. Because yeah. often they don't do that. Well, you know, in San Francisco, whenever they have a show here, they just shoot the exteriors with a second unit. And yeah. then do all the interiors. Well, they in shoot, LA. shoot the exteriors, <clears throat> but they're usually characters from the show in the exterior, and then the interior they shoot here too. Oh, that's great! Yeah. Well, you're in New York. So well, I can. You know how I yeah. can tell they shoot the interior? Uh, this is a strange way of knowing they shoot the interiors, folks. <sighs> but they always wind up showing a fireplace, and they're only two kinds of fireplaces in this apartment house, and we have both of them, one on one side in the living room, the other side in the dining room. And whenever I see uh, that it's been shot here, I look for the fireplace to see if they actually shot in the apartment, and I can tell there was Jungle Fever was shot here. Uh, the, uh, the next film after that that, uh, what's his name was in, uh, who was in Jungle Fever? Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember his name now. Wesley Snipes was in the next picture he did, uh, which I can't remember the name of right now, also was done here. And I could tell because inside the apartment, there were the fireplaces. So that's how I could tell it was done here. Oh, yeah. This, and this, uh, right. th this was the, uh, the crack house in uh, New Jack City. Oh. Uh, yeah. And, and, and they called it the Carter. It had a thing, a plaque over the name of it saying the Carter. And I will g many times take a cab and say, you know, leave me up, blah, 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 blah. And they stop and they look over and they go, you live in the Carter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I remember that crack house. Yes. And they, they uh, Wesley Snipes at one point in the picture has a, has a diagram of the building, right? 
Mm -hmm. And he then points to a window in the diagram and says, this is where we're going to build the, uh, the crack lab. And, and it's, it's our, it's our kitchen. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Or it could cool. be, it was actually the window next to it, which is the pantry, but it was our pantry. Uh, and I went, Oh, well, it's good. You know, I wanted to have it blown up that shot and just put it up in the kitchen. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, um, eyes wide shut. You were talking about movies that are, have different versions yeah they there's a european version and there's an american version and the american version uh they took out some of the sex scenes so they could keep it rated r um and i have the european version oh really so i, I get to see how it. hard did they get in the european version well um there was like an orgy and uh they show some actual like it looks like the guy is just like having intercourse i mean is there a can, table can and you, you can see his butt and everything yeah but can you see naked. penetration though that would be uh, what would distinguish no it. but for some reason they were worried about it so what they did in the american version is they put like somebody in front of this and there were a couple other scenes too where yeah uh you couldn't see penetration but it was heavily implied and there was a lot of nudity and they just they covered, uh, you know, like on the old Austin Powers movies where the yeah, flower, the yeah. face isn't. Yeah, they did a lot of that uh, in the American version. Well, uh, and not a very good movie, Eyes Wide Shut. I never thought it was particularly a good film. I didn't like it at first, and then I watched it a couple more times, and I really liked it. Yeah. It, it, it's one of those things that grows on you. I mean, I hate to um, have seen it be the last work of Kubrick. I, I yeah, it wasn't know. his best, that's for sure. You know, yeah. Um, uh, but what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, um, uh, the thing that made me uh, kind of mad is there was a show on HBO called The Deuce. Uh, and The Deuce takes place in 1963. Uh, and it's all about you know Times Square and porn and hookers and all of that. I don't know if you saw it on HBO, but it was I on didn't. HBO. And the very last episode, some guy is watching a peep show. And they show what he's watching. And believe it or not, there is hardcore. Now, when I'm saying hardcore, I mean you see penetration. Whoa. Okay? This is HBO. Used to be owned by Time Life, later by Time Warner. And those were the very people that tried to get Midnight Blue off the air. <laughs> and now here, how many years later... That same organization or its inheritors are running actual hardcore pornography on HBO. Yeah. Now, they had another show before that called oh, oh, Lie to Me or Don't Lie to Me or something. I can't remember the name of it. And they still have it up, by the way, on their, you know, their HBO Go. Uh, and... They did have some hardcore, some scenes where you could actually, for a moment, see penetration by the actors. Wow. And I kept saying, this is the company that took us to Washington, D.C. before a congressional committee. These are the people that took us off the air, right? And we had to fight to get back on because we were making time life look bad. Go fuck Rice yourself. Huh? Yeah. Demand an apology. Huh? Yeah. Demand an apology. Yeah, demand an apology. They they don't probably don't even remember the situation, but you know, I mean, it 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 was not. It was a, it was a big problem for me. But to see that the very people who were the the architects of at least our temporary demise at Midnight Blue are the same people that are doing porn now. You know, and, and I remember this thing, I, I think you remember I showed it on the TV thing when we did the TV thing that somebody yeah, made yeah. up in which somebody, is, it goes, uh, uh, hey, mom, um, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm do, I'm, I, I just made a movie. And, mm -hmm. and she goes, well, what, what do you play? She says, well, I play this guy and I, I move in with this other guy and then we have sex together. And she goes, oh, my God, my son is... My son is in porn. And he said, it's not porn. It's HBO. <laughs> and then there were a whole bunch of other things like that about, well, first yeah, I have sex with her, funny. and then she has but, sex with me. What? 
It was a very funny bit. It was like a whole series of people t- describing the, the scenes they're in and then the, the, the yeah. per- person they're with is like, what? <laughs> what? And then finally at the end, it's, it's not porn. It's HBO. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's true. I mean, uh, uh, HBO over the years has gotten away with a lot of stuff. How, what do you think's happening to HBO? I mean, it, it, vis-a-vis Netflix, is Netflix kind of, Putting them to shame now? I don't see the quality of programming that they used to have when they had The Sopranos and The Wire and Six Feet Under and those shows. I don't see that anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It looks like it looks like they're kind of giving up in the face of Netflix because Netflix has more money now in subscribers than HBO. HBO has maybe. 50, 000, 50 million subscribers, which is a lot of people. Netflix, now at something like $14 a person, a household, has over 110, 000, 110 million worldwide. So think about the amount of money coming in every month. That's a lot of Netflix originals. They're buying up all the comics and getting them exclusively. That used to be a province, a province of, uh, of HBO. Uh, they're able to pay money for uh, original movies. Uh, they're not getting these things nominated for Oscars. They're, there's a documentary they currently have on that's a Netflix original that's Oscar nominated. Um, they're really giving HBO a run for their money, and yet I hear they're twenty billion dollars in debt. So you know, who knows? What... I believe it. I've just seen less quality programming out of them over the last couple of years, uh, out except of H- for Game of Thrones. Out but, of HBO, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Game of Thrones. Um, uh, what, what's the other show? Westworld isn't bad. No, I love Westworld. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I kind of I kind of I really became fond of, of Westworld. It's just that they're not. Here's what they're doing that's not working for them. We're in a world now of binge watching. We're used to getting Jessica Jones, and we're used to getting all twelve episodes or thirteen episodes, and then you sit there till you're bleary eyed and watch the whole thing. Uh, HBO grinds them out one a week. And that doesn't that doesn't play as well, you know. Uh, Hulu does the same thing. They play, they uh, they do have some things they have you so you can binge watch. And then like Handmaid's Tale, which won all kinds of awards and did very well for them, uh, was just put out one week. So, you know, old school. So uh, the latest thing today, and I don't know if you saw this. Did anybody watch the president? with the survivors uh i can't watch him i i'm sorry i just refuse to watch him I, he, it just turns my stomach i can't I, watch him anymore either it, yeah i well right. i i watched this thing for my own edification in which all these people were i felt being used by trump to mm-hmm. make trump look good and yeah. it, uh. you know and i yes bob did you see it at all i started to watch it and I couldn't stomach it but I saw a photograph of his cheat sheet yes yes now, well, you're glad you mentioned that every network <laughs> managed to get a picture of that he was holding <laughs> <he had> a <laughs> cheat sheet in his hand and he, he you know how he sits like this kind of like you know and he had it uh in between his hands but not facing him but facing outward so it was upside down and all the networks were photographing it. <laughs> I love that. Uh, and and the third item, did you see the third item on the list, or third or fourth item of, of the cheat uh, sheet? I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just in case you forgot. <laughs> I hear you. Once again, folks, imagine a cheat sheet. That you know, might it might say, hey, you know, we're doing this and we're doing that, and yes, and there's a you know, there's this problem and there's that problem, but we're going to take care of that. But the last one is, we hear you, huh? You can't say that on your own. 
And I was just waiting. The reason I was watching it is I was waiting for because they had some they had like one kid there with a little with a beard or something who was really good. I mean, he really just made it rended your heartstrings. And I was just waiting for him to say, fuck you, Mr. President, or somebody yeah. in that room to go after Trump. And none of them did. And it was it was Trump, Pence, and Voss, all all in the same room. I and understand she was all smiles the whole time. She was. She was. And and it it, it I I felt these people were being used and they were being far too polite about this thing and maybe were vetted for politeness before the situation. Yes, uh, Patrick. Well, I heard there was another cluster fuck tonight where they had some kind of a town hall. Oh, that was CNN. CNN, yeah. And that's another one where now everybody's going to take this wrong because everybody thinks I'm a fucking prick no, you with the gun. And, and all of that, and that's fine. But right now is not the time for these families or these kids to confront lawmakers because it's all emotional. They don't have the time to rationalize and make logical argument because I, I caught the tail end of this thing on CNN because it was all over Facebook, and I had no idea what it was supposed to be. And these people kept shouting down whoever it was that was talking. And that's not how you conduct an argument or you conduct a conversation. And I kept thinking to myself, if they would have just waited another week or two and let some of these people be able to form their question and maybe let things settle a bit, then, what, like you said, some of those people at the White House being used as pawns... Well, I think I, what, what, you're, what you're saying is not that it's too soon, because I, I don't ever think it's too soon, especially with something like this, to discuss the problem. Mm. However, what was happening is CNN were using these people for ratings. Okay, that's why they did the town hall for their own... Right. Yeah, and and the president and the president was using these people for his own thing as well. What I do think was proper and right were the students from the school, along with students from a lot of other schools, showing up at the state capitol with signs and protesting. That yeah. I think is okay. I th I know what you're trying to say here, but the fact is that in these these two cases that you're mentioning, the president thing and the CNN thing. These were both done uh, uh, for not the right reasons, okay? Well, and, and I, I guess but, when I say too soon, maybe I, I said it wrong. Too it, soon is a, and, not a good term. No. And, and, and the White House did it too soon. Y yeah. Versus yes, yes. The student and the family because what, you, like you said, with it the was it, it was done to make it was done to make Trump look good. It and was, CNN. I mean, and CNN to look uh, good. Tom I, has his hand up there, and I want to hear yeah, what Tom I was say. You actually said exactly what I wanted to say, Alex. And, and yeah, if, we can't just say, well, let it settle down, because that's been always the problem. When we, we say, oh, well, you know, we'll, you know be, let's, let's calm down and be rational and talk about it later. Then it just gets lost. We really have to strike this while the iron's hot. And so, as I said, yeah, exactly what you said, going and confronting these uh, these politicians in the state capitol and, and D.C. at all. It's exactly what they're doing. I'm really proud of them, and we need to yeah. do everything we can as older people. Going back to what you were saying, we talked about Ronnie. We may not uh, we may not be able to go out those those marches, but we can support them, yeah. and we need to well, support them. Uh, need yeah. to, to to make sure that when they're being attacked by the right wing. That yeah, they're trying. There was there was some uh, there was some right wing propaganda that they were hired actors. These kids, did you yes. see that? Uh, yes. And and it, nothing could have been further from the truth. But nevertheless, you start a rumor, and it becomes sometimes becomes truth. But what you're and saying, they're being paid by Soros is the other right. thing that's what, coming out. Was that it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I know what you're trying to say. Uh, um, 
Patrick. And I agree with you to the point that I think that these people have been used in this particular situation by two organizations, the Trump people and CNN, to gin up the, 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 the situation. Uh, but I think a natural uh, desire to demonstrate in, in, immediately in, in, in the state capitol, I think that was not bad because not all of those were kids from that school. A lot of them were kids from schools all over the state. Right, and that's, a, that's a organic. Yes, kind of exactly, happened. exactly. This was staged at the White House, and this was staged at CNN. And, and the thing is, I saw something on CNN after it was over with where Jake Tapper, uh, I guess he was the host, and said, this is a historical moment in this arena, blah, blah, blah. Just by saying that, it's a setup. And and it just, it, it, uh, the protest to me was more effective because it was organic in nature rather yeah. than state. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, I think we'd all agree to that. Yes, uh, Bob. Yeah, you were saying uh, you felt that the people at the president's thing was vetted. And when I started to tune in, I seem to remember some girl was talking to the president and saying how he was such a wonderful president yeah. and how he's done so much yeah. for the United States. At that point, I just said, no, this isn't real. Well, they supposedly had a meeting with the president before they had this televised gathering. And I think they were pretty much coddled to, coerced. Uh, they, maybe, maybe there was even a couple of people there they felt were going to be uh, wild cards and they didn't even let them in the room, you know, that it was an audition process. Yes, Patrick. Well, CNN, the only people that I saw that were allowed to talk mm -hmm. were the ones that were on the stage. They didn't go into the audience, which would have been a more organic sort of thing. It was the people on this stage, and and it just it looked too contrived to me. It just like the White House. So, you know, it to me, both of them were bullshit. And the only thing that had any legitimacy in my mind was the protest because it was organic. It it, yeah. it was it just happened. Right. By the way, uh, Patrick, let me apologize to you tonight because my picture has been in your face most of the night. Not all of your face, but this, uh, uh, your cheek or whatever, because I, I was so involved in this discussion that I wasn't paying attention to the way I was framed there, because I usually move myself back when there's, you know, I, I, I'd rather be the small one, let you guys be the large ones. Um, again, you know, tonight, this has been a very good show. I mean, we've got, we've gotten into a, a lot of other side trips uh, on all of this, and uh, and also uh, with the exception of of Patrick, uh, people who aren't here all the time, and I like that. I mean, it, it's a it's a very fresh approach, and we, you know, uh, it, I I was very proud of the show we did on Saturday, um, Friday. Uh, and um, uh, and I was uh, I was fairly proud of it yesterday. Uh, I wondered what would happen when Phil was added to the mix, and of course there was that kind of a little bit of a disruption. But what made Friday so good was that it was a very civil discussion, and and uh, and very passionate. Uh, the the guy who was from Florida who called us I can't remember his name right now offhand. Uh, and and was lived five miles from the school was just gut wrenching and Kevin, when he said on this program, I'm afraid to send my child to school. You know that that you know that 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 kind of said it all. That's how it affects all of us. Yes, Bob. Yeah, I saw something today where an eight year old girl asked her mother for new shoes, and you. Her mother said, why do you need new shoes? She says, because I have the shoes that light up when I move, and if a kind of gunman comes in, he'll be able to spot me. This is an 8-year-old. This is an 8-year-old. This is the reality 8-year-olds live with. 
so it's, it's traumatizing these kids who weren't even involved, and they're, now they're traumatized just from seeing this on the television. You know, when I went to school, the only thing I had to worry about was the guy who threatened to beat me up after school. Yeah, me too. That yeah. was it. <laughs> you know, and he did I mean... beat me up, but, you know, I'm alive. Yeah, yeah. My he, teeth got knocked out. He, 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 didn't, he didn't use a, a gun as his weapon of, uh, of choice, as it were. Uh, I remember a couple times there was a rumor that someone had a knife. Ooh. Yeah, that, yeah. That was the big deal. Yeah. I, I don't think I ever knew of a kid bringing a gun to school when I was going to school. Me you know. But, you know, this has been terrific. You guys are great. I, you know, Ray, I've become very fond of you. Oh, well, thank over you. The last, uh, <laughs> uh, last couple of nights. And, and the same is true of Bob Eberth, who you've called quite a bit the last couple of days. Uh, and, 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 Tom, it's always a pleasure when you call. Because uh, uh, you, you're always a, 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 a beacon of light, uh, and, all of it. You, and, and, and you keep us honest. And Patrick, I like it because you are to the right, but you're sensible. You know, yeah, you're, you're exactly. sensible, and and I appreciate that so much. I appreciate the all of you for having joined us tonight. And if you would be so kind, give a nice wave goodbye, and we'll call this whole thing off. All right. Thank you, guys. Hope we'll see you tomorrow night. Anyway, that's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, there'll be, we'll have a, a whole new citizen panel, and perhaps some of the same people will be here as well. That would be nice as well. Uh, I'm just doing a few little things I have to do to clean things up here. Uh, uh, what comes up next right after us is the... Uh, Intersection with Jack and Amy, that is followed by Intersection at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. And then tomorrow night, don't forget, at 9.30, it's Damian Chaplin and The Exchange, followed by me at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. <laughs>